Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another week here at Drone DJ. This is the second last week, uh, before end of the year, before twenty twenty one. Definitely a slow week news wise. Uh, so we've got the some DJI updates, including the um, uh, terminating some of the support for older products, and uh, obviously new updates about being on the U.S. Uh, government's blacklist, uh, and more sales news on DJI drones before end of the year. If you're still looking for last. Minute uh, shopping ideas, uh, and then we do have a funny-looking fractal macro bat, <laughs> uh, which is a really interesting-looking drone. Uh, we'll show you in a moment. And at last, we'll also have some Altel updates on the Explorer app, which allows you 16 times zoom for the Evo 2 drones. So without further ado, uh, Kirk, let's start with uh, the DJI's termination on some of the older drone units. What are your thoughts? Yeah, like every you know manufacturer, they build a lot of products over the year, and eventually they can't support them all. So there's a huge list of uh, controllers, transmitters, uh you know gimbals and even uh, and a few drones that uh that are no longer being supported by dji um i don't recognize most of them <laughs> they're definitely <laughs> before my time of getting into the drones uh, you know a few of them though uh some stuff that you used before apparently yeah and i have to say i'm getting a little sentimental reading over the list uh and also feeling a bit you know oh the, how many of this i actually recognize so this is the official list from uh, from DJI, and you can see a lot of them are the, um, uh, starting from the old main controllers, the NASA, the Wukong. So if you if you've been in the drone business for uh, at least you know seven eight years, you probably recognize some of these names. And uh, actually, I dug up some of our older pictures. So this was uh, the third drone we built, and it was the DJI Flame Wheel F. 550, which is on one of the, um, the drones that's that's basically terminating the support. Uh, so let's see if we go down the list. Gimbal drone, there we go. Uh, wind 2, spread wing, where is the... Uh, there we go, flame wheel, F550, F450, 330. These were um, the do-it-yourself drones from mm -hmm. DJI back then. So you buy the kits and you assemble them together uh, we started with uh, the 550 which you can do into a hexacopter um, and what was interesting is back then there were a lot of uh, third-party parts you can buy so we, we eventually replaced the arms with both third-party arms that replaced them uh, um, landing gear everything is is more diy so it was, it was really a lot of a lot of fun this was actually the first job site uh, uh, ever we we took a drone to it was literally a week after we assembled the, the flame wheel and uh, one of the discovery um, directors in my office said hey I have a show bring the drone out uh, so imagine we had no aviation experience we just came from film uh, so we, we built this thing a week ago had maybe an hour of flight time on it uh, took it to the film set realized it was at uh, a local airport uh, and it was a Second World War, um, you know, historical um, TV show. Also, they've got the uh, vintage cars and the uh, explosions and everything happening on set. So great, great first job to take your drone to. <laughs> Almost had a heart attack, you know, <laughs> when when the drone was was just disappeared somewhere in the air in the smoke. We couldn't even see it. Oh boy. Um, until it came back, landed safely. So that was that was using the NASA uh, flight controller. And after that, about a year later, we started assembling the the heavier one uh, to fly. It was we assembled it um, with the intent to fly Red Dragon. So that was the beginning with the Cine Star Eight that we converted into a coaxial drone, uh, and that was using the Wukong flight controller so that was actually um the basically the hub where the ESCs you know all get connected to the flight controller and then flight controller connects into the sensor and all that uh let's see uh, that was a top view of, of basically the central part uh, we eventually replaced the carbon fiber to a composite material so it's less conductive and we took about took us about 10 rebuilds, you know, replacing the parts and landing gear. We eventually changed to DJI retractable landing gear. Uh, and that was when we when we were able to put the uh, Red Dragon um, and Alexa Mini on. It. So, yeah, I have to say, you know, definitely right now we, we use more of the Alta um, X or um, more from FreeFly, the larger drones from FreeFly for the bigger film jobs. And they're definitely less customization. 
on the, uh, so it's a lot easier and, and better integration of the overall system versus back then. Uh, uh, even buying, you know what, even buying the batteries and, and buying um, the connectors is you have to cut the lease of the batteries to put different connectors because they, they all came different standards, right? Different countries, they all had different yeah. connections. Um, and shorted, you know, a couple of knives from, uh, you, you learn from cutting LiPo batteries, don't, don't you know, cut the, the two cables at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So fun times. Uh, so again, this is getting a little sentimental. If if you had been in the drone industry for a while, take a look at uh, you know some of the DJI uh, products that they're terminating the support for. I have to say that those drones can still fly. You know, they, they we really looked after them, uh, and they lasted uh, for a long time. Uh, so technologies definitely develop much faster than the deterioration of the drones. Oh, yeah. Totally. So, Among the DJI news, yes. I guess this is this is the fun one. Um, well, they're... this one is interesting. Um, we a few a few months ago, DJI got put on, of course, the commerce blacklist for for exporting technology. U.S. companies exporting, you know, barring being being barred from exporting their technology to to DJI. Um, the embargo. Yeah, and they're now uh, dub, you know doubling down on even more, um, adding them more blacklist. Um, this. Uh, because of their, uh, because of all the issues with China, uh, of course, but this one specifically with their, um, their, their abuse to the Uyghur Muslims over in, uh, in China. This one uh, is the from the Department of Treasury. So this one's a little bit more hard hitting, I think, than, than the other one. Uh, this one's barring any sort of investments from U.S. companies. Uh, to DJI, uh, it also uh, it seems like it could be barring any type of investment from any American investor. Now, DJI is a private company, so it doesn't hurt them like a pro like a publicly traded company um would but um i think we did but i guess they shut the door of potentially dji going public on on nasdaq on, yeah and on the nasdaq or new york stock exchange anything like that yeah it definitely bars them from from doing that now um it bars them if they want to do possibly another series of funding coming up you know they're, they're limited to only um non-us uh investment firms uh, one of, uh, I believe, one of the investors for DJI during the previous round of funding was actually Accenture. So it, it is a U.S. investment uh, company. And um, the thing that sucks, I think, the most is that now U.S. If you are invested, there are investment firms uh, with stake in DJI. They cannot sell their shares now. Totally, um, yeah, because so definitely they invested with in. with the intent to exit at some point and cash mm -hmm. out, right? Yeah, they're they're locked in with. They cannot buy anymore, and they cannot sell now what they have. It's always interesting anytime seeing the list, um, because if you look at, you know, obviously on, on, on going public and investment perspective is hurting DJI. Uh, but besides that, it's not stopping anyone in states from buying a DJI drone, right? Um, so if we look at it is how much damage does it do for DJI, it's not so much of, uh, of you know, stopping people from buying. I believe it's more of a PR damage it, it oh, definitely yeah. is not working in um you know in a favor because how many people actually look into the details of what does that blacklist actually mean right if they just read the title the new u.s blacklist um a lot of people's perception is i can't fly this or i can't buy this in mm -hmm. states that was always the first perception so for those who don't know dj drones who haven't bought any drone uh, and don't understand the usability of dj drones compared to the other ones it's Probably they're probably gonna think, well, it's better to go buy a Skydio, which is you know a, a American-made drone, right? Yep. Or buy an hotel or something different other than DJI. So PR-wise, it's definitely not helping anyone because there's always the perception, right? I mean, yeah. I I'm Chinese, but I've been living in Canada since 2004. Never worked a single day in China. Um, but when we when, when I started changing to drones from uh, from uh, film production. Uh, uh, obviously, my husband is a crazy Russian. So a Chinese <laughs> and a Russian starting a drone company. The first thing we got was what ceases knocking, literally ceases knocking on the door and said, hey, we just want to check you out and make sure you're legit. <laughs> um, they said they cleared wow. us after, but, you know, you never know. But yeah. then, again, those are just perceptions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, you can still definitely you can still buy DJI. You can still fly DJI. Um, nothing is nothing's changed there. The U.S. is definitely trying, though, to, uh, to put some sort of pressure um, on China somehow with with their biggest companies uh, being being blacklisted from certain um, activities in the U.S. So definitely. Um, and also interesting is because this is the year Brandon Schumann left 
DJI. I mean, traditionally, if you see news like this, you definitely see official release from from Brandon Schumann from DJI with some kind of official response. Yeah. Um, so with Brandon Schumann now moved down to Boston Robotics, um, it will be interesting to see, you know, who comes out from DJI to stand for it in terms of uh, politics, right? Legal and politics. Yep. So last news around DJI is if you're still looking for the last minute shopping deal, uh, the DJI RC Pro is now available with the Air 2S and uh, the, the deal is still on. So it's $749 off. I did read, um, I actually got some messages over, over Instagram of people saying they're having challenges connecting the RC Pro to their Air 2S. Um, so definitely look a little more into the user menu if you're planning to get it and hook it up with, uh, with your Air 2S. Yep. Uh, also with that, there's a few other um, items going back on sale. We saw we, we talked to them before when we did our uh, Black Friday kind of round, um, episode, but uh, the Skydio 2 is back at 949 again. Of course, we're coming up on two years since that's been announced, so maybe there might be something coming up in the next year. Uh, the entire, it's been on sale for almost like, what, a month and a half now? Um, and then also the DJI FPV is back 999 as well. So uh, I have to say from Skydio, I see their ads pop up on my social media all the time. Uh, they are beautiful. doing a good oh, yeah. job at uh, at marketing. It's obviously, they're, they're the new kid on the block as far as, you know, drone pilots are concerned. Yep. Uh, they did come after DJI and uh, and Altel. Also, they do have to, you know, obviously hash out more on marketing and advertising to get that brand awareness. So in terms of that, they're, they're doing definitely a good job at marketing. Yeah, and I am. Uh, I am checking. Uh, you can, I believe, you can get the uh, the DJI Air Two S with the uh, with uh, before Christmas. So I did just check that one out for you guys. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, we have another interesting looking passenger drone. Uh, is it a drone or is it a bird? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great. I saw this and I just started laughing because it's like this is perfect. I love. We this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's real or not. Um, definitely CGI uh, image and video. The video is even great because it has Lego mini fig figures in it. Don't know where they got the, the rights to do that, but um, still concept. Yeah, it's like uh, so. It's a passenger drone. It it's apparently can take off vertically, but then it goes horizontally, uh, flies horizontally, and it looks like a bird. Like uh, it's Does coming. The, do do its wings flap? I wonder. I, I don't. That was my question too. Does the wings flap? Because it, it talks about some sort of technology that it can take off and move and get the full speed faster. I'm like, is that flapping wings? Because I don't know if I want to be in a drone that has its wings start flapping. <laughs> Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, my favorite is actually the legs. The legs are interesting as well. Yes, those are. Uh... I'm, I'm always interested in uh, retra so retractable landing gears are a big thing for me on drones yeah. uh because i'm used to camera drones right so if you can retract the landing gears you can pan the camera 360 without having to worry about it and the traditional um you know the the three axis the traditional larger mm -hmm. drones you see the landing gear it's fixed on the camera gimbal so when you rotate the gimbal the landing gears rotate with it but it, again it's just adding a wind factor on yeah. the camera gimbal, right? Too much of a cell effect. But this is actually interesting. So it looks like it could retract. I, I'm gonna suspect it's gonna retract like the bird's legs, right? Yeah. Uh, I like the I like the uh, the name, like the type of uh, uh, name for this takeoff. <laughs> well, yeah, there's all the name of the, yeah, but also the name for the uh, the takeoffs because it's not they don't call it a vertical takeoff. It's an electric near vertical takeoff. <laughs> it says E N. Like N VTOL or something. Like <laughs> yeah, too many, you know, there had been too many terms that uh, <laughs> guess what the general public probably couldn't care less. You know, I come from the space side of things when for for all my other reporting, and I'm just so used to weird acronyms. So at this point, what is another just adding a couple more letters onto an acronym <laughs> already? So I'm used right. to it. <laughs> Um, well, definitely we'll keep an eye on this. It, it certainly looks interesting. And I have to say that the company has sort of a personal touch to how they write their website. Uh, what was it on their website? Uh, so it's worth checking, checking uh, Fractal's site uh, for product description. Uh, the Macrobat can operate as an aircraft 
or as a drone, uh, followed by a footnote, since this is a family-friendly website, <laughs> this is the last time <laughs> that the D word would be used. So it's it's very funny how the website is actually written. <laughs> yeah, there, it's, it, it's very fun, uh, very fun-looking company, I guess. Yeah, I guess, you know, someone had a, a weird sense of humor. <laughs> Those are the best developers you want, weird sense of humor. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so if you're interested in it, check out Drone DJ site for the full story. We will leave the link in the description below in the video after uh, the live broadcast. Now, last piece of news this week is the hotel update on the Explorer app, which will give capability to 16 times zoom. Uh, this is the digital zoom on the hotel 2 drones. Yeah, so they uh, they're coming out. Of course, um, Artel's uh, they're coming out with the new Nano and Light drones coming up next year, uh, and so they have digital 16x zooms on their uh, drones. So we're going to be doing. They're going to be. They've updated their app to support that with the all the Evo series of drones as well. So if you have one of those, you now get to do uh, 16 times digital zoom. Of course, it's, it's it is digital zoom. So. Uh, whether or not the sensor was made to have that side of zoom and, and how that'll handle quality. Um, from we shall find out. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find out because you, you, which of these drones do you fly? Uh, we have the Alta 2. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're definitely be interested to see how the, the quality drops. If there's any sort of, uh, they maybe they try to upscale it for you or something, or maybe they're they're doing something straight, just giving you straight. But you up. know what? Because because the controller screen, like if you're using your phone to fly, the the screen is already so small. So if you zoom in, you know it definitely helps with seeing a little more details depending on what you're looking for, right? Um, and on a smaller screen, you're not gonna notice that much of a quality difference. It's more yeah. about when you're in flight, it helps to identify uh, anything of interest that that may be difficult to see from a smaller screen. Gotcha. Yeah, I use that a lot for for photography. You can punch in and all that stuff. So yeah, definitely. It, it definitely makes sense for that type of. Yeah, and uh, even for navigation purposes, right? If you're flying close to obstacles and you're not sure what's actually there, you can you can just quickly pinch in from uh from the screen, right, and then see a little more detail. Perfect. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, and I believe Kirk, you may get to try this at CES. So, yes, uh, I will be heading out to CES this year in January, and they will be having the Nano and Light out there on display for, for us to check out, and they will have a possibly a flight demo. So I'm looking forward to getting hopefully getting my hands on one and getting a little bit of flight time. I'm trying to get a, a Mini as well, a DJI Mini, so I can have something to compare it to. Um, when I um, know, and uh, get this on Friday, we actually have a special episode on CES, which will discuss, especially if you're in the drone world, uh, there are a few companies to go check out at uh, CES, um, especially, you know, now it's really rare to still see an in-person event. So stay posted yep. Friday, same time at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. We are going to have the special episode on CES. And I believe that's, uh, that's a wrap for this week's news. Uh, Next week, we're going to have a news of the year roundup for 2021. Uh, what has happened in the drone industry in 2021? So stay posted next Wednesday, same time. See you online.